my favorite knife. All right, let's zoom in on my balls. Hello friends, tonight we're going to take a look at my favorite fixed blade knife of all time. This is the Attention to Detail Mini Tanto made by Doug Esposito and it is an amazing, amazing knife. It's not some super technical knife made of unsharpenable metal that you're going to use to fight off six ninjas when your mom's basement experiences a nighttime ninja raid. Instead, this is a tool. It's a gentleman's knife that you can carry and cut things that you might need to cut throughout the day. It's incredibly useful. It's made of CPM 3V. The blade shape is awesome. The handle shape is awesome. And I've just never seen a more useful fixed blade than this. I've used it damn near every day uh, since he sent it to me. And I love the thing. It's amazing. So let's talk about why it's so amazing. So this knife is so awesome because it's the right size. It's made out of the right steel, it's a good weight, it's very sturdy, and it looks right. All of these things come together to make an amazing fixed blade. So I've told you all that I do a lot of recording studio work, uh, producing records for other folks and, and uh, playing session parts, mostly guitar and, and bass on other folks' albums. Well, during the day, I also do musical instrument repair. So I build and maintain guitars and basses and, and occasionally other things too, but mostly guitars and basses. I cut a lot of stuff. I need a knife all the time in the workshop. And I don't mean to just cut threads on the hem of my shirt. I mean, I'm cutting uh, plastic binding, hardwoods, uh, anything that you can imagine, this knife has to cut it. So having a knife like this is incredibly useful. In fact, it's, it's almost necessary uh, in a workshop situation. So having this to depend on day after day made me incredibly appreciative uh, for this design and it made me think how the hell did i live without this for so long i'll make this review really simple before we dive in if you're looking for a tool knife and you want something custom and handmade that is beautiful and strong and useful and is going to last you a lifetime you found it this is it go buy one of these right now you're not going to do any better than this it's going to cost you a little bit but this is also a lifetime purchase you can pass this knife down to your kids if you want this is an heirloom you can't go wrong with one of these and if you're one of the four people who regularly watch this awful channel you know that i don't normally tell you to go out and buy something i don't say this is it this is the definitive product uh, you should go out and buy this thing immediately but if you're looking for this type of thing this is the absolute best option that i found and i have quite a few knives sort of in this genre let's say and some disclosures this knife was given to me for review but i liked it so much that i turned around and bought another knife from doug at full price and i can't give a brand a higher endorsement than that i really really like these um also uh, doug is my friend but if you've watched the channel you know that i will mercilessly tear into any product even if it was given to me for free if i don't like it because otherwise well, what's the point of this channel why the fuck am i doing this if i'm not gonna tell you the truth tell you how i actually feel about something and how it's actually performed this has performed extremely well and i love it a wise man once said, with custom knives, you're buying the maker as much as the knife. That's entirely true. When you buy a custom knife, something one-off like this that was handmade, it's sort of imbued with the personality of the maker. And part of that is, you know, you're having to conduct business with the maker. You're getting to know them. You're sort of spending time with them over the phone. But more than that, you're getting a piece of their life, a piece of their time. Doug put a lot of time into this knife and you feel that when you pick it up and a lot of what i like about this knife and about doug in general is his ethos and i was gonna have this whole section in this video where i was gonna tell you about his life and career because it's incredibly interesting but i think that he did a better job talking about that on his youtube channel so watch those videos they'll do a much better job of, of explaining you know where he's been and how he got here uh, than i possibly could but it, it's a very interesting story especially when you consider that he's only been making knives for three years. And I, I don't mean that, oh, attention to detail is three years old and he was making knives before that. I mean, he has only been making knives for three years and he made this knife after having only produced knives for about a year and a half. So think about that. I imagine throwing yourself into something head first to the point that you gain the skills necessary to make this in a year and a half. That's, that's pretty incredible, I think. 
So Doug is the kind of guy who sees room in the business for everybody. And I feel that way as well. Like if you have a YouTube channel, I don't see you as competing with my channel. If you're doing well, I'm doing well. The more we all grow, the industry grows and we all do better. And Doug's always quick to share knife making tips. He'll tell you anything you wanna know about the industry, uh, uh, about his history, about how he got here, about his work ethic. He's happy to share all of that stuff. And for that reason, right now, I want you to stop this video and I want you to go to his YouTube channel, which is in the link below. I'll probably put one up on the, a link up on the, the video screen. <laughs> the, the fuck is the video screen? I'll probably put a link up there too. So you can go to his YouTube channel and I want you to subscribe. If you're only gonna subscribe to one channel today, don't subscribe to my fucking channel. Go and subscribe to his because it's awesome. Uh, his channel is great and I ravenously devour everything that he puts out because he shows you how he makes knives and he shows you his tools and his equipment and his shop. And a lot of makers are not willing to do that. So if you have any interest in the craft of knife making, he's somebody that you want to be watching because it's very interesting. So right now, go and subscribe. I'll wait. I'll wait right here for you. Go subscribe. Thanks. His YouTube channel is awesome, and I appreciate you going and subscribing to it. He deserves more subscribers than he has, and uh, I, uh, I take that as a, as a personal favor to me that you, would, uh, that you would go and do that. Thank you so much. All right, so this is going to also, in addition to being a review of this knife, going to be sort of an overview of attention to detail knives in general. We're going to talk a bit about the mini tanto style because this is a unique knife every knife that leaves the shop is completely unique and that's part of the appeal you can't buy my knife exactly and i can't buy your knife either you have one that's unique i have one that's unique and uh, no one else will ever have our exact knives so it's very cool knowing that you have a unique piece of doug's time i think so before we leave my black void uh, that i live in and uh, take this knife to the desk to take a closer look at it. Let's compare it to a few other knives and we'll be able to do that against a, a, a living human, uh, which I almost certainly am, despite the fact that I live in an eternal void of soundless darkness. We'll compare it to my body so that you can see uh, what the knife actually looks like on your person. I think that's important because when we're looking at things uh, at a desk, well, who the hell knows how big that really is. You know, you can't gauge my hand size, you can't gauge the size of the desk. So I'm hoping this will make a knife size comparison a bit more useful. So first, let's compare it to uh, Microtech Ultratech, one of the classics. So the blade is about the same length, but the Microtech has more cutting edge. The Microtech weighs a lot less, obviously, but it's not gonna be nearly as sturdy as this very chunky fixed blade. Look at how thick that blade is. That's really, really thick. Um, another common choice would be the SE3, a classic. The SE3 also has a lot more uh, actual cutting edge, but if I can turn them both the right way, the SE3 is much, much thinner, and it's going to be a bit more brittle as well. But the SE3 is going to be more of a, of a, a, a slicer, while the attention to detail is a bit more of a chopper. It just kind of depends on what you need. I need more of a chopper in a workshop. I think this is the more versatile knife than the SE3. Also, the SE3 is made of S35VN, which I've been afraid that I was gonna break. I really wish I'd gotten the one made out of 1095. That was a mistake, and that's not SE's fault. That's me being an idiot and not buying the steel that I actually needed. So I show you this knife up against these other two because the SE3 and the Microtech Ultratech are incredible knives. You cannot go wrong with either one of those. The SE3 and the Ultratech are two of my absolute favorite knives of all time. So I just wanted you to see uh, some other really common options and kind of show this, uh, show this one against those. Um, to me, the purposes of all three of these knives are so different. I'm not saying that you should buy this knife over those other two. They don't remotely do the same thing. I'm just saying this is how they do compare and the sizes are similar in this way. They don't perform the same task. So if you're interested in all three of these knives, still buy all three because they're gonna do different things. All right, well, enough yakking out here in the void. Let's take this back to the desktop and take a close look at it. Features and build quality. Back at the desk. Yeah, it feels good to leave my void every now and again. 
So this knife is seven and a quarter inches long overall. The blade is three and a half inches long with three inches of cutting edge. I thought this blade was made from quarter inch stock. It's very beefy, but when I measured it again, it's actually thicker than that. I thought, surely I'm making a mistake. So I tried a few different measuring devices. They all show that this knife is just shy of five sixteenths. That's very, very thick, hilariously thick. Doug described this knife as, as being of the sharpened pry bar type, and that's very accurate. I tend to seek out the chunkiest fixed blades I can find, so for me, this knife is a dream. These days, Doug uses somewhat thinner stock for this style, uh, as I'm sure most folks don't like uh, absurdly thick knives quite as much as I do. The blade is made of CPM3V, as you can see there. That's another thing that really sold me on this particular knife. I love 3V. It's super tough, and this knife is definitely built for toughness. But when folks talk about the toughness of a steel, what exactly do they mean? Well, that means that 3V is less likely to break or chip. You can do things with a 3V knife if you had to that would definitely snap another blade. CPM 3V also has decent edge retention, certainly better than average, and the edge isn't horrifically difficult to work on once you do dull the knife. Corrosion resistance is okay, uh, though it isn't a stainless steel. You do have to keep an eye on it. I love the way Doug chooses steels. He takes a very utilitarian approach. He's not the sort of guy to get fixated on different super steels, as long as he's getting the results that he's after, that is. But he always picks the right steel for the job, even if it's not the most popular steel. For instance, I just bought a little defensive knife from him that's made out of RWL 34. You don't see that one very often in an American knife, but it's an inspired choice. In much the same way, CPM 3V, for me and the way that I'm going to use this knife and have used this knife, there's no better steel than that. Knife consumers have this bad habit of latching onto certain steels, and then they behave as though every knife must be made of whatever the steel of the moment is, and that leads a lot of folks to have knives that won't actually do what they need them to do. Every steel is a trade-off. Choose the wrong steel and a blade might be too brittle, or alternatively, not hard enough to keep an edge as long as you need. There is no perfect steel. The handle scales here are made of burlap micarta, and they're beautiful. And we have to talk about this handle. I've had to contain my excitement for the handle shape. This knife feels like it was custom fitted to my hand. I cannot adequately describe to you how good the handle is. This is the best fixed blade handle shape I've ever tried. No contest. It's the first thing you notice that when you pick one up, it's some, some weird magical shit. And we'll talk more about that later in the video. The blade is hollow ground. And that removes enough weight to help the knife feel relatively quick and easy to use for such a thick blade without sacrificing robustness. The angle of the edge is fairly shallow overall. It's tough for me to show that to you on video. And this makes the edge difficult to touch up as I go, but it also makes the knife more durable. I love that the edge angle is shallower up front and steeper at the back. This is very useful. Also more on that later. The false edge here looks beautiful and the grind is absolutely top notch. The jimping on this knife was done with a file by hand, and it's beautiful. You'll see that uh, some of his knives uh, have machined jimping. So what I like about this jimping is it's just aggressive enough. It feels very organic because, again, it was, it was done by hand. But it's not so aggressive that as you use this knife for long periods of time, it starts to remove skin as you go. It's just the right amount. Oh, and we need to talk about the sheath. This is a very, very good sheath. Doug makes them out of Kydex, the classic modern material, and he stuck a tech lock on mine, which is a personal favorite, though he has additional attachment methods should you want to wear the knife another way, like inside the waistband. So how are attention to detail knives produced? Well, Doug is always looking for ways to use technology, and he automates anything he can, whether it's with a CNC machine or blade blanks cut by the local water jet folks, but everything that you feel and touch is done by hand. By that I mean all the sanding and smoothing and polishing, that process is done the old-fashioned way. You'll notice the details everywhere, but especially in the grip. It's impossibly smooth. And that's why the knife sits so well in your hand. There are zero weird rough edges anywhere. The use of technology where it matters most, and handwork where it matters most, gives you an amazing knife at a very good price point. A knife like this is under $400 at the time of filming. So you can get a production knife 
a production fixed blade for about that price from a lot of manufacturers. But with attention to detail, you're getting a custom knife with custom quality at the price of a high-end production knife. That's excellent. That's another thing that really drew me to the brand. I think that's awesome. And also, while we're at it, let's compare this knife in size on the table to some of the ones we looked at earlier. So here it is against the, uh, the SE3. Hope you can see that. I can't see what you're seeing, but I think that's in frame. So there's that for comparison. And again, our Ultra Tech again. And I don't want to pull out too many knives to show you because we can go crazy with the knife comparisons, but you get the idea. And any of these three, these are all amazing knives. You can't go wrong with any of these. In fact, I don't consider it an either or situation. I think you should just own all three of those if you're a knife enthusiast. So why choose a fixed blade? In 2020, why would I not go with a folder or one of those OTFs that I love so much? Well, if you're using a knife for long periods of time, still, nothing is as comfortable or as useful as a fixed blade, or as strong. In the workshop, I might need to pick up the knife 50 times throughout the day. Maybe more. Opening an OTF or a folder 10 times is no big deal, but by the end of the day, on time number 40, you're going to be sick of hitting that button or flicking the knife open with your thumb, right? But that's not the problem. I have plenty of OTFs and folders that I use as workshop knives. Specifically, a SOCOM. We'll put it that way. And an LUDT. And I also use a few Ultratex and, and even my older Halo sometimes. The problem is that a mechanical device wears, and those knives can only be opened a finite number of times. OTFs, as long as you're buying a Microtech, are not unreliable, but springs have a lifespan. Even the spring on this LUDT, it can only be used so many times. Most of the time, my OTFs can be fired a few thousand times before I need to have the springs replaced. The halos are an exception. They will fire tens of thousands of times before you have to change the springs, and that's one of the reasons that they might be my favorite OTF. So if the springs need to be swapped every few thousand firings and you're opening and closing the knife a few times a week, the springs will last for years. But if you're using a knife the way that I am, the springs are gone in a few months. Microtech will replace the springs for free, and I have plenty of backup knives, so that's not a problem. But that's just the nature of having a super cool OTF knife. You are going to have to do that maintenance periodically. Now, folders have a much longer life, but they still wear out and require maintenance. Though they can often be opened hundreds of thousands of times before a part wears, it does still wear. But fixed blades, they need nothing but oiling and sharpening, and they'll work for you. You might get 100 years out of a fixed blade with only maintenance that you can do in your shop while you work. And fixed blades are more durable overall. There are things you can do with a fixed blade that would destroy an OTF in five seconds, or even break the lock on a folder for that matter. The fixed blades really can't be beaten for strength. A fixed blade, especially this one, it's a tool. In the long term, nothing is as convenient. So if you use a knife for work, I highly recommend that you at least try carrying a fixed blade for a while. I, I think you might like it. How is this knife performed? Well, this is the best fixed blade I've ever used. We touched on a lot of this stuff earlier, looking at the features point by point, but now we'll explore in depth. And I'll warn you, uh, I'm very passionate about this one. We're looking at the finest of fine details here. A truly great knife is the sum of many small choices on the part of the maker. So we'll start at the blade and we'll work our way back before we look at the big picture. Yeah, this is a really thick, like monstrously thick piece of stock there. Let's look at some other thick knives. Here's the uh, Microtech SOCOM Alpha, another thick piece of steel, still not nearly as thick as the attention to detail, and an SE5 that I used recently and forgot to clean, so now there's some corrosion on the blade. That is my fault, not SE's, but look, even the SE5, not as thick as the attention to detail. So the A2D is very, very thick, but remember, the new small Tantos are made from thinner stock. Yet for all the thickness, this tip is remarkably pointy and can be used to pierce things, uh, aluminum paint cans, some wood, whatever, and you're not going to deform or break the tip. That's virtually impossible unless you're doing something super dumb. The false edge grinds really help that point. Uh, I think there are five surfaces kind of coming together at the tip, making it a lot finer than is visually apparent. But the angles are shallow enough that they give the point a lot of strength. The tip kind of works like a medieval bodkin arrow, opening like a can opener, wedging through the material. I had to use this to pierce a large aluminum can to drain it, and the tip pushes the metal aside with very little effort. Don't do that to your knife, though. This knife is more of a traditional Tanto, 
and I've come to see the value in such a shape. A lot of makers have a hard transition from the main edge to the front edge with a point dividing them. Doug has a rounded transition here, giving you a little bit of extra edge. Let's take a look at this halo again to look at the newer style of Tanto. See, so we have this very, very hard point here instead of this smooth transition. Originally, I thought I might miss this point up there. I'd often use it like an X-Acto knife to, to cut out a pit guard material for a guitar or whatever. But Doug's classic Tanto shape, it actually still does that while retaining all of this usable uh, edge down there. The point is just a point here, which is great, but this will function like a point and cut normally. And I can still do the thing where I cut with the back edge exclusively and leave the front edge razor sharp untouched until I need it for detail work, just like I do with these. This front edge, though it has some curve, is still straight enough that I can turn the knife on its side and kind of use it like a chisel. Another reason I like Tanto so much. And because this blade is so massively thick, Doug's hollow grind is critical. Approaching the edge, the blade is plenty thick, but not so thick that you have no slicing performance. And yeah, with the weight, this knife definitely wants to be a chopper, but it slices better than you'd think. When appropriately sharp, cutting the right material, of course, but that goes for any knife. The less steep angle on the edge makes it so that it's harder to roll the edge, but you also can't touch it up with leather as easily for the same reason. It's, it's all a trade-off. Earlier I mentioned that the angle of the edge isn't completely uniform. That's a good thing. It's steeper from here to here, and then a bit shallower uh, up towards the front. And having that steeper angle here is going to give you better slicing performance where it counts. And this angle is shallower for chopping. Doug eyeballs it when he's sharpening doing it totally by feel, so he doesn't say, oh, I perfectly sharpen every knife to 17 degrees. That's just not his style. So I suspect this is really a byproduct of that, but it just sort of naturally happens the way Doug sharpens, and it makes the knife all the more useful. So we've got three inches of edge here. For a workshop knife, there's really not a better size. Doug Electro Pencils A to D and the steel type on the blade. An awesome handmade touch, I think. He says he has no intention of stopping this, even as his methods get more sophisticated and he takes advantage of more technology, he just kind of likes that it shows you that this is a unique one-of-a-kind knife that was handmade by somebody. As we discussed earlier, this knife is 3V. It has really good edge retention and it really is as tough as people say. Um, I don't know if you can see all of the marks on the blade. This is after I cleaned it. I have heavily used this knife. It has really done some work. I'll tell you that. Doug works hard to pick the right steel for the job, and he really sees the benefit of a good tool steel for a knife like this. 3V is, is perfect for someone who needs an indestructible knife, but is willing to, to keep an eye on it to check for corrosion. Because I live in SC, and this knife has spent plenty of time in my hand, I have to be careful about corrosion. I keep the knife oiled, and I check it every night. 3V is not stainless. Uh, he told me he likes stainless steel for defensive knives because they're going to ride close to your body and won't be used for tool tasks. This jimping is just perfect. It's, it's absolutely awesome. Another thing that I love about it is he didn't just put jimping here, which is what a lot of, uh, what is what a lot of makers would have done. You have a huge chunk of it right here. And what that's doing, not only is it locking against your thumb when you ride up really high, but it's also catching your hand a little bit as well. So you have all of that gripping surface that's locking you into the knife. That's really, really perfect. Especially if you need to do something where the knife is turned on its side. I feel like I have so much control that way. It's really nice. The subtlest wrist movement is going to help that thing work for me the way I need it to. All right, and that brings us to the star of the show. This is the most comfortable grip on any knife that I've ever handled. I would have told you that before I ever owned this knife. I'll never forget the first time that I picked up one of these in a store. just feels like it melts into your hand. Immediately, you notice that this grip is small, and you think it's not going to be long enough, right? That does not look long enough for my hand, but it's actually perfect. Your index and middle fingers lock into these grooves here, just like you would think, and that gives you great purchase with no need for aggressive texturing that'll rub you raw all day. This is completely smooth right here. It does not look like it would work, does it? But oh, it absolutely does. And then you control the knife more finely with your ring and little fingers back here. Again, best handle shape I've ever tried. I thought, hmm, I wonder how well smooth burlap micarta is going to do throughout the day. Is this going to grip enough? 
So Doug does textured grips. Some get pretty aggressive, but smooth was right in this case. For a knife I'm going to only use a few times a day, I, I do like aggressive. But that gets old when you have the knife in your hand all the time. Here, though, you don't need the texturing because of the handle shape. That is absolutely locked in there. Your hand just locks around the knife. It is not going anywhere. You'll also notice Doug's sanding work here. A lot of folks get sloppy with the fit of the scales. They have a bucket of them, and they screw them on the knife, and then they, they send it out on its way. But a lot of work went into making this fit seamless. I don't know if pictures in the video are going to do that justice or not. But it's absolutely perfect. There's a lot of effort that went into making this very pleasant, uh, since this is the spot that you're going to be handling every time you pick up the knife. The same amount of work was done here too on the back, but it's less noticeable because that's tucked up inside your palm, but it's absolutely just as slick. This knife is so comfortable. And uh, we need to talk about the one thing this knife really won't do, or at least uh, doesn't do well. This knife is not tactical. I am so sick of tactical shit. Everything is so fucking tactical all the time. Can't a knife just be a knife? So, I don't carry this one for defense. That's not what it excels at. For that, I carry a strictly defensive knife that never gets used for anything else alongside this knife. This knife is a tool, and it excels as a tool in ways that a defense-oriented knife never could. So, use the right tool for the job. 99% of the time that you own a knife, you'll be using it to cut food and boxes and shave wood or whatever, not fighting off fucking terrorist ninjas and getting in knife duels with communist warlocks stealing our missile secrets. Besides that, uh, Doug is a very well-regarded martial artist, and he makes amazing defensive knives, and he certainly knows what he's doing there. He owns his own BJJ studio and a gym. In fact, I bought one of those knives to show you down the line. It's uh, not here yet, but I'll review it as soon as I've had a chance to carry it for a while. So, you can absolutely still get a defensive option from him and you know press something like this uh, into service as a defensive knife. But again, right tool for the right job. So, the sheath. This is an amazing sheath. Like I said earlier, this is damn good Kydex. Like everything else at A2D, these are custom made for each knife. He doesn't have a bunch of Tanto sheaths ready to go. This fits my specific knife. Unique curves and all, custom made. The fit is flawless. But don't take my word for it. Look, there is no play in that whatsoever. And uh, like we said earlier, my sheath has the tech lock on it. Because those are my favorite. But uh, Doug has these set up where he can configure them for just about whatever you need. From tech lock to inside the waistband. Whatever you want. But I'm a big fan of the tech lock. But yeah, look at the workmanship here. That's really great. There are manufacturers who focus just on Kydex. That don't make Kydex knife sheaths nearly this good. Doug's one of those guys who just has a lot of wisdom. He's like a, a fountain of profound sayings that just kind of spew out of him in all directions. You know, just profound one-liners everywhere. They just kind of pop out all over the place. And he said something really wise. He said, when I set out to learn something, I really learn it. Meaning, he didn't fuck around in the garage an hour a week for five years saying he was learning knife making. He went out there, absorbed as much knowledge as he possibly could, and just drilled these skills and experimented and put the time in and the the hard work and I'm sure the, 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 the blood, sweat, and tears along the way. In, in a very short amount of time, he was making great knives. And I find that to be very inspiring, personally. Doug also told me that he tends to turn the things that he loves into a career, and that's something that I relate to. If I really, really like something, whether it's music or guns or whatever, I'm going to try to turn it into a job. And that's part of committing to something fully. You're committing to something so fully that you're saying, I think I can make real money off of this if I put in the time. So why am I telling you this? Well, you know, on the one hand, I want to inspire you, but... On the other hand, I want to say, this is what Doug was making after 18 months. After 33 years on this earth, I can barely make a fucking sandwich. So imagine what Doug's making right now. I've seen some of his recent work, and it's absolutely stunning. This knife 
is an incredible knife. The stuff that he's making now is, is mind blowing. That's why I bought one of his more recent knives. So you can't go wrong with anything that he's putting out and it's always improving. And he'll be the first person to talk to you about all the ways that he is improving. He's not shy about saying, you know, I'm improving my sheaths. I'm working to make my grinds more precise. Um, I'm working to streamline the process to make sure that I can offer a better, more consistent product. Whatever it is, he'll tell you. And I love that. I also find that very inspiring. But the knife that you'd buy today from Doug would be even better than this thing. It would be mind-blowingly great. So I can, without any hesitation, without any reservations, tell you to go out and buy one of these knives. And that's happened with maybe five or six products that I've ever reviewed on this channel. Although it feels weird to even call this a product. This is a bit more like a work of art, isn't it? But I completely endorse this knife. <laughs> endorse. Mr. Hammond, I've decided to endorse your knife. Uh, yeah, you really can't go wrong with one of these. You know, I tried to find something to complain about. I was sitting here, I, I wrote the script and I was going through the video and I was like, God, it sounds like I'm fucking advertising this knife. And I don't mean for it to come off that way, but at the same time, in the same way that it's not ethical for me to hide a flaw that something has or hide something that I didn't like about a product, it's, it's equally wrong for me to just make up some shit that I didn't like just to seem more balanced. So I can't find anything here to complain about. So last of all, once again, I want you to go and subscribe to Attention to Details YouTube page. Again, links in the description. I'll have another one up on the video screen or whatever the fuck I called it earlier. But I want you to go over there and subscribe because Doug's channel is not him telling you all the reasons you should buy one of these knives or doing like product showcases or anything like that. It's him just talking about his history and knives and knife making and his passion for craft. So go and subscribe right now. And if you're looking for a custom knife, Order one of these, I have nothing bad to say about them. This is what Doug's made after 18 months. So imagine what he's gonna make after 10 years. I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, whatever this was that I just did, I'm still learning this new format that I've got going on. I, I hope it's working out. Um, you're gonna really notice a difference, I think, when I start doing uh, gun reviews in the new format, and there's a lot of range footage mixed, and you should see one of those pretty soon. But anyway, bear, bear with me during the transition. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all, and I hope you have a wonderful evening and a happy holiday season. And I'll talk to you next time. Good night.